All right, good morning, folks. I'm going to talk to you today about a couple of products I have here uh, that when I was contemplating buying them, there was no information. I couldn't find any videos, very little information. I could find no videos on YouTube at the time, so I thought I'd make these for other prospective buyers so that they could see how these products work and, and, and whether or not they're worth buying. So, um, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I bought a lot of guns. Uh, I was single, I had lots of money, and I believed in one gun for one purpose. But much more recently, I've been married and have a family now and bought a house. And as most of you know, that can add up. And so I've been hemorrhaging guns uh, that I amassed while I was younger. And uh, so now if I can make one gun do more than one thing, all the better. Uh, plus, I've, I'm living in a, in a rural area now, but the, uh, the area around my home is becoming more and more suburbanized, and more and more often I want to reduce the amount of noise I'm making. Uh, the magnemitis of my youth has sort of faded, and uh, if I can get the job done with the minimal sound signature, all the better. So, the first product I want to review today is a chamber adapter. Both of the products I'm reviewing today are chamber adapters, but this one is made by um, a company which you're not going to get any information about. It's manufactured by AA and G Design. Um, basically what this is is a 303 British chamber adapter, specifically designed to fire 32 ACP, um, and it's sold through the Sportsman's Guide. Last time I checked, they still had them, and they're quite reasonable. I, I think they're less than $20, and it's made from steel. It is magnetic, um, but it's a rather soft alloy of steel, which is probably good when you're dealing with these kind of pressures, uh, even generated by uh, small handgun cartridges like the 32 ACP. Um, of course, it's supported by the much stronger steel in the uh, barrel of the rifle. Um, but it is fairly soft, and if you have a hard extractor, as most rifle extractors are, and they're sharp, as most Enfield extractors are, you're going to end up with nicks all around the rim of your chamber adapter. But it doesn't seem to affect the function at all. I've used this one quite a bit now, um, and it still extracts just fine. And as you can see, I hope, it looks pretty much like a spent 303 British case, uh, only it's made from steel instead of brass. Uh, but when you look at the end of it, you can see it's not quite like a rifle cartridge at all. The walls are much thicker, and it actually has a chamber um, to take a pistol cartridge. Now, specifically, it's advertised as taking the 32 ACP pistol cartridge, which is... Um, as some of you may know, although it's an automatic pistol cartridge, it's semi-rimmed. So it will work in some revolvers, and that rim allows us to load it singly into this chamber and load the whole apparatus into the rifle and fire it. I have my um, trusty old number 4 Mark one. Lee Enfield Sporter here with a Bishop stock on it. I'm sure it was sporterized back in the 1960s uh, or 50s. Um, and I just have a cheap scope mounted on here with a B-square scope mount. Doesn't really matter because we're not going to be doing any accuracy testing today. I just want to show you how these things work and I'll explain to you how they shoot. Um, that's one thing. The cartridge, the pistol cartridge is not um, secured anyway inside of here so it can just fall out so after placing it inside the adapter you feed the adapter into the chamber the whole shebang close your bolt and fire pretty quiet a lot quieter than a, uh, a 762 or a uh, 303 British round but not quite so quiet as one might hope. It's still got a pretty good crack to it. 
But when I read the literature that came with this, it says you can use this for 32 ACP, 32 H&R mag, 32 Smith & Wesson long and short. That got me thinking. So I started digging around in my ammunition box and I found some 32 S&W long. I did have some 32 H&R mag cartridges, um, but the bullet, the large cylindrical lead bullet was too big. It uh, hits the end of the chamber and it won't fully insert into the uh, chamber adapter. But these 32 S&W long target cartridges, which are relatively low power uh, cartridges loaded with a wad cutter target bullet, load in there just fine. Now, listen to this. You can hear the bullet hitting the target. What you have here is a poor man's Delisle carbine, or carbine as the British would say. Um, one thing is the spent cases don't always come out of this adapter, so you're going to have to use some sort of a uh, your own extractor. I'm using an awl here to eject the cartridges from the chamber adapter. So there you see it. It works pretty well. Um, the 32 ACP, both the 32 ACP and the 32 S&W long have a, a bullet diameter that's very similar to 303 British. 303 British is not a 308 caliber, 303, uh, 30 caliber cartridge. It's not even a 303. What it is is a 311 or 312, which is very close to both the bullet diameter of the 32 ACP and the 32 Smith & Wesson Long. The 32 ACP, however, although it's rather a higher intensity cartridge um, than the 32 S&W, which is why it makes more noise, um, it just doesn't seem to work very well with the rifling inside the 303 British. The bullets are all over the place and half of them go through the paper sideways. So it's really not very great unless you're just planning on doing some plinking with it and not expecting to hit much. Um, so although it's advertised for 32 ACP, not ideal. However, the 32 S&W wad cutter cartridges group very nice. I'm shooting at 25 yards now. I'm not going to show you my target, but you can take my word for it. Uh, just shooting offhand, I have a group that's about an inch across and um, it cut nice perfect round holes indicating that the bullets are still going straight forward unlike the 32 ACP bullets which went through the paper sideways some of them. So if you're planning on buying this chamber adapter from Sportsman's Guide um, using it with your Lee Enfield or Ross rifle um, and shooting 32 S&W long target rounds like these cellular and below rounds it can be pretty fun and I haven't got to try it on a groundhog yet but uh, I will be doing so and uh, I'll maybe give a report after I've done that.